Hey, what's going on, everybody? My name is Corey, better known as the Seaman, and I want to welcome you to another edition of the Seaman's Cinema Sit Down and back in for a little Spooktober action. That's right. If you've been following along, you know that all October long, I will be watching a different, scary, horror, spooky Halloween movie, um, and then trying to get a review up that day. Uh, we, we struggled the first week, but we've been uh, much better since we got all caught up. Uh, we are 10 days into the month of October, and as you can see on your screen uh, with the, the Spooktober list in front of you, um, the overall month, I think, is a pretty nice mixture uh, of classics and newer movies and different types of vibes for the horror and Halloween uh, films that we're looking at. But Specifically, these first 10 days, man. I mean, it's been a real nice assortment of classic, kind of family-friendly Halloween movies, um, some new uh, horror movies, and we are in the middle of a classic slasher run. Oh, and I can't wait to continue. So why don't you pull up a chair, take a seat. We're getting ready to dive in to Candyman. That's right, man. I gotta make sure that we don't say his name four more times because I'm not taking any chances. And uh, when it comes to Candyman, for me, the thing that really makes this movie work is kind of threefold. I think the story and the execution um, of that story from the production side uh, is something that really works for the movie. Uh, Clive Barker was on for, uh, writing here, um, and you definitely feel his vibe throughout the film. Um, but what I really dug from the writing end was diving into the idea of urban legends. Um, you know, so many of the classic slasher greats um, were... Movies that created their own legend, allowed the character to become a legend. Um, and while Candyman does the same thing, diving into the idea of urban legends in general, you know, something like Bloody Mary, which, you know, you say Bloody Mary's name five times in a mirror, she pops up behind you. Diving into that type of a concept and looking at the villain from that angle um, allowed you to bring in, like, a ghost element, which was really cool. Uh, something that, you know, obviously A Nightmare on Elm Street plays with as well. Um, but you know, also, like, brings in, like, a dirtier, grittier vibe than a lot of the other movies that we had had that, that were kind of battling for dominance, so to speak, uh, in the slasher genre. And that's the thing that I like about this movie is the, the dirty and the gritty. And that's that Clive Barker vibe to it. I mean, when you look at the stump on Candyman's hand and the hook coming out of it, like, it, his skin and flesh is hanging in it and it looks rotted and bloody and gross um when you go into uh you know the project areas uh, uh, of the movie um specifically in the cabrini green area um it, it it feels dirty and grimy i mean that bathroom that virginia madsen's character uh, helen lyle goes into uh when she's investigating uh some of the Candyman stuff like it makes your skin crawl and just creeps you out in a way that some of the more straightforward slasher movies hadn't really done. This, you know, like I said, kind of had more of a, a Nightmare on Elm Street vibe where it was doing things and playing into some of the body horror, like I said, with the, with the stump and the hook or when he reveals that his body is covered in bees and when the bees are coming out of Tony Todd's mouth, well, as a guy who was stung by a swarm of bees, like that stuff, ugh, does that to me, you know, and, and it's something that I don't get from too many of the other slasher flicks that I love about this one. Um, I also really enjoyed, and I think a lot of this goes to the credit um, of director Bernard Rose as well, it is the, the way that the movie kind of keeps you off balance in a degree, where the, the first half is really this kind of investigative detective -y type story. Um, you know, you have uh, Helen Lyle, who's being played by Virginia Madsen, um, and her partner Bernadette Walsh, uh, being played by Cassie Lemons, doing research on urban legends and specifically Candyman. Um, and, and as they kind of go through that, you're building the Candyman lore in that first half of the movie. And then you're letting Candyman run wild in that second half. And the thing with the second half, it has a dream type feel and nature to it. I, I get this vibe when I watch the second half of that movie. Um, because Candyman can kind of put you into a trance. Does it to Virginia Madsen multiple times in the movie. And when he's on screen, you kind of, feel like you're almost in a trance and it's that voice man the tony todd voice and then giving it that echoey vibe really makes the second half of the movie that keeps you off balance and it's supposed to and allows for a lot of the surprises and the insanity aspect of the second half of the movie when Candyman starts coming after helen nobody believes her that she that he's real and she keeps popping up on, on murder scenes and with you know babies going missing and attacking people or making it look like she's attacking people 
she really starts to lose it. And that's where you get into the other thing that makes this movie work is Virginia Madsen and Tony Todd. And watching Virginia Madsen lose her mind <laughs> makes you feel like you're losing your mind. Um, and, and her performance just from the beginning to the end of the movie is just so rock solid. I mean, she really is good at the detective stuff. You know, when she's talking to like uh, that kid, I think his name is Jake, and he's giving her some of the information about one of the killings by a drug dealer who's taken on the name of Candyman. Um, but in reality, those are kind of like the henchmen of the Candyman. He needs to keep people afraid of the name to keep himself real. And like when she's doing all that stuff, man, like she's so good with that kid and, and able to work people to get the things that she needs to get or know about. Um, and then when she loses her mind, I mean, she loses her mind and it's just so fun to watch. And then, like I said, Tony Todd, I mean, the dude's a legend. Um, uh, one of the most iconic voices in, in film it, in general and also one of the most iconic horror characters in general i mean Candyman alone but you'll see tony todd all throughout horror movies if you follow closely enough and i mean just a legend uh to the genre and, and his performance as Candyman is terrifying man like the way he can pop up and like i said so much of it is that voice and that delivery the way he looms or just appears it's terrifying stuff you know like when you say his name five times and then he's not there. You turn the light out and boom, now he pops up. Or just the different things that he, he, he can do is a character that definitely deserves to be amongst the greats. Um, and that's another thing, too, with watching these movies is seeing how back in the day it was about, you know, creating these great characters that could live on movie after movie after movie after movie. And you'd end up with these franchises where you'd have brilliant creators like Wes Craven and John Carpenter, Clive Barker. And... They would work on a few, and then their material would go on and get really ridiculous. And when you look at horror now, it's more about the creator. Don't give me uh, something that's a serial, uh, lies story that we can just keep bringing back and bringing back and bringing back. I want you to come up with different stories over and over, and this kind of more highbrow approach to horror. And watching these classic flicks, you know, really sets the tone and the feel and the, 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 the foundation that a lot of the current creators built off of. But they're taking it in a different direction and going more story-oriented. And not that these stories are bad. Like I said, it's the character that drives these movies, whereas it's the stories that these creators can come up with nowadays. And it's just interesting to watch how the world of horror has evolved. Um, but much like the world of horror, the, the world of the slasher flick, you know, evolved many, many times. And Candyman is certainly a big part of that evolution. Um, you know, definitely gave you a different vibe from some of the others and created another character that just haunts your nightmares over and over and over again. Um, so Candyman for me, another one of the classics. Uh, I always enjoy putting it on. And, you know, the other thing watching this movie uh, did for me today was get me excited for Nia DaCosta's Candyman that hopefully will come out sometime soon. Um... Because there are so many elements and things that were at play as far as like people coming up with theories and the fact that Yaya, uh, his character was going to be like potentially the baby from the first Candyman, something I thought that was genius. And then when you're watching it, um, you know, the names all start hitting. You're like, oh man, Yaya's character is, uh, you know, Anthony McCoy. Oh, this is little baby Anthony. Hi, I'm Anne Marie McCoy. And now when you look at the IMDb, you know, list, you know, you have Vanessa Williams and Virginia Madsen and Tony Todd all listed as cast members. And that just gets me super psyched, man. Like watching this movie, I think when the new one does come out, you have to watch this one first because it seems like the perfect tee up into whatever they're going to do next. And I can't wait to see another evolution for Candyman. Uh, it should hopefully be uh, a lot of fun. It seems like when we gone back to some of these movies, specifically Halloween most recently, it, something's working uh, with bringing back some of these characters. I mean, Pennywise worked. Um, and like I said, in this age of not having these types of characters dominate the big screen, uh, it's kind of cool to see some of them coming back. So I'm definitely looking forward to that, and that's something this movie definitely did was get me excited. So there you go, man. Those are all my thoughts on Candyman. Now I want to know what you're thinking. Uh, what did you think of Candyman when it you know, came out, if you were around uh, back in 92 when it, when it dropped, uh, or whenever the first time you saw Candyman uh, was? Um, you know, What did it do to you? Did it work? Did it not work? Was it scary? Was it skin crawling it creepy um where does Candyman fall in your uh you know rankings of some of the slasher greats um and just in general anything you're thinking about uh candy the new candy or anything we're doing with spooktober 
down below in the comments section. Look forward to talking to you down there. As always, if you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you're new, you want to come hang out with the Seaman uh, all Spooktober long and you haven't yet, you want to show a little love for the channel, a uh, little support, jump over there, join the Sea Maniacs by hitting that subscribe button, hit that little bell if you want those alerts. And until next time for the Seaman Cinema Sit Down, I've been the Seaman. I'm signing off. Peace! Well, Oh, B, you guys are still here. You must be looking for some more content. Well, don't worry. C-Man's got you covered, man. You got videos like this guy and this guy. And if you haven't yet and you want to come check out all the C-Man goodies, join the Cinema Sit Down Squad, man. Hit that subscribe button. And don't forget to hit the little bell down below that, too, so you can get alerts every time I make new videos.